Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. This video is the continuation of my previous lecture video on enzymes. Today I shall discuss about the factors which affect the activity of enzymes. The activity of an enzyme describes how fast an enzyme catalyzed the reaction that converts a substrate to product. This activity is strongly affected by reaction conditions which include the temperature, pH, concentration of the substrate or enzyme and the presence of inhibitors. Enzymes are very sensitive to temperature. At low temperature, most enzymes show little activity because there is not a sufficient amount of energy for the catalyzed reaction to take place. At higher temperatures, enzyme activity increases as reacting molecules move faster to cause more collisions with enzymes. Enzymes are most active at optimum temperature, which is 37 degrees centigrade or body temperature for most enzymes. At temperature above 50 degrees centigrade, the tertiary structure and thus the shape of most proteins is destroyed, which causes a loss in enzyme activity. For this reason, equipment in hospitals and laboratories is sterilized in autoclaves where the high temperatures denature the enzyme in harmful bacteria. We can see the relationship between the rate of a reaction and temperature in the figure. Enzymes are most active at their optimum pH, the pH that maintains the proper tertiary structure of the protein. A pH value above or below the optimum pH causes a change in the three-dimensional structure of the enzyme that disrupts the active site. As a result, the enzyme cannot bind substrate properly and no reaction occurs. Enzymes in most cells have optimum pH values at physiological pH values which is around 7.4. However, enzymes in the stomach have a low optimum pH because they hydrolyze proteins at the acidic pH in the stomach. For example, pepsin, a digestive enzyme in the stomach has an optimum pH of 2. Between meals, the pH in the stomach is 4 or 5 and pepsin shows little or no digestive activity. When food enters the stomach, the secretion of ACL hydrochloric acid lowers the pH to about 2, which activates pepsin. If small changes in pH are corrected, an enzyme can regain its structure and activity. However, large variations from optimum pH permanently destroy the structure of the enzyme. We can see the relationship between the rate of a reaction and pH in the figure. In any catalyzed reaction, the substrate must first bind with the enzyme to form the enzyme substrate complex. When enzyme concentration increases, the rate of catalyzed reaction increases because they produce more enzyme substrate complex. When the enzyme concentration is kept constant, 
increasing the substrate concentration increases the rate of the catalyzed reaction as long as there are more enzyme molecules are present than substrate molecules. At some point, an increase in substrate concentration saturates the enzyme. With all the available enzyme molecules bonded to substrate, the rate of the catalyzed reaction reaches its maximum. Adding more substrate molecules cannot increase the rate further. We can see the relationship between the rate of a reaction and both substrate and enzyme concentration in the figure. Many kinds of molecules called inhibitors cause enzymes to lose catalytic activity. Although inhibitors act differently, they all prevent the active site of an enzyme from binding with a substrate. Inhibition can be competitive or non-competitive. A competitive inhibitor has a structure that is similar to the substrate. It competes for the active site of an enzyme. As long as the inhibitor occupies the active site, the substrate cannot bind to the enzyme and no reaction takes place. As long as the concentration of the inhibitor is substantial, there is a loss of enzyme activity. However, increasing the substrate concentration displaces more of the inhibitor molecules. As more enzyme molecules bind to the substrate, enzyme activity is regained. The structure of a non-competitive inhibitor doesn't resemble the substrate and doesn't compete for the active site. Instead, a non-competitive inhibitor binds to a site on the enzyme that is not the active site. When the non-competitive inhibitor is bonded to the enzyme, the shape of the enzyme is distorted. Inhibition occurs because the substrate cannot fit in the active site or it doesn't fit properly. Without the proper alignment of substrate with the amino acid site groups, no catalysis can take place because a non-competitive inhibitor is not competing for the active site the addition of more substrate doesn't reverse this type of inhibition. Example of non-competitive inhibitors are the heavy metal ions like lead, silver, mercury that bond with amino acids containing side groups such as carboxylic group or hydroxyl group in their side chain. Catalytic activity is restored when chemical reagents remove the inhibitors. Antibiotics produced by bacteria, mold or yeast are inhibitors used to stop bacterial growth. For example, penicillin inhibits an enzyme needed for the formation of cell walls in bacteria, but not human cell membranes. With an incomplete wall, bacteria cannot survive and the infection is stopped. However, some bacteria are resistant to penicillin because they produce penicillinase, an enzyme that breaks down penicillin. Over the years, derivatives of penicillin to which bacteria have not yet become resistant have been produced. In both cases, increasing the substrate concentration will increase the rate of reaction, 
but in case of competitive inhibition the reaction rate will be comparatively higher than the non-competitive inhibition with the increase of substrate concentration because in competitive inhibition increasing the substrate concentration displaces the inhibitor molecules directly from the active site that's all for today in the next lecture video i shall discuss about the remaining portion of enzymes if you like my lecture video then don't forget to click the like button you can also share this video to your friends and can also put your comments. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Your subscription will encourage me to make more lecture videos for you all. Thank you.